good to be here this morning. This is the place that I need to be. Don't know about anybody else, but I need to be in this place so that I can learn about topo, what, I forgot what it was called, topo something, topo isomerase, that's what we're going to learn about today, topo isomerase, and what does topo isomerase do? Give you a free video. They're all free, so you can take one of each. We've actually had people come uh, like, and visit us on a weekend just to, be, just to be at church here. And they would ask, can we have one of each? Oh, yeah, take one of each. Make, can we make copies of these? Oh, yeah, make copies of them. Save us the money. So... Um, where do I want to have you turn? Turn to, turn to Psalm 139. That's going to be our starting out verse. Psalm 139. Mm. Well, you'll have to forgive me. I am still asleep this morning. Some days I wake up like that. It's like, I, it's like if I had 15 more minutes of sleep, I'd be fine. Just 15 minutes, that's all it would take. Uh, Psalm 139. Uh, let's go to verse 141. And, and we'll, we'll see what God uh, is saying through the... Uh, it's either David or Solomon. Uh, we, had, we had learned in Bible college that the last, last of the Psalms were written by Solomon. I don't know that. The Bible doesn't tell us that. Uh, you can say David or Solomon, either one, either one of them will work. But ultimately it was God who gave the inspiration. So Psalm 139 Verse 141, I will praise thee, for I am, do what? One thir Psalm 1, what? Oh, I see it. Look, you ought to see my Bible. It starts out, yeah, I need big print. It starts out 14, and it puts the letter I right next to it. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. I'm like, Psalm 1, okay, Psalm 139, verse 141. Yeah, I mean, I'm not kidding you. You ought to see my Bible. They are literally smashed together with the same spacing. Told you, was, I'm telling you, I should have stood in bed. Of course, my mama taught me not to stand in bed, so I shouldn't have stood in bed, but I should have stayed there another 15, 20 minutes. Verse 14. There we go. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Now you think about that for a minute. Think about how amazingly you're made. Think about, let me, I'll just give this to you. How do your eyes see? You ever, ask, you ever ask that question? Huh? You have, we learned this in, in school science class, that a series of rods and cones, and they're literally, some of them are shaped like a rod, some of them are shaped like a cone. The primary doctor I used to have, uh, when he gave me his answer, I thought he was an atheist. And uh, he may still have been, but I talked to him a couple years later, and he told me what church he went to in this area. And I won't, I won't announce it. But anyway, uh, he definitely didn't talk like an, uh, an, an um, 
atheist then. But anyway, I asked him the question, in your opinion, if I were trying to, or if you were trying to prove that God created man, uh, rather than man just developing by accident over millions of years, what would be your first choice as far as man being created or designed versus man just happening to be the way he is? And he said, the human, he, without a doubt, he said the human eye. So why is that? He said, to understand the mechanics of the human eye and how these rods and cones inside your eye take the light that's coming in, whether it's, and science has now realized that light comes in waves or rays and in particles at the same time. So they got that figured out that, in other words, they don't know. But anyway, it comes in and those rods and those cones pick up that light. And somehow, some way, they are able to convert those light particles that it's receiving into the data that the brain needs to take the, uh, the images that it's getting every second, every microsecond, every hour, every minute, every day. It's taking those images and converting them into a sequence that the brain can understand. It can then uh, convert it back to a visual signal. It's similar to um, how digital cameras work. Digital cameras will take um, all of the light that it sees and it has these little converters behind the lens and once the light, whether it's blue light, green light, red light, yellow light, infrared, doesn't matter. Once the light hits those converters, those converters change whatever that is into a number, changes it into a number. Di a digital sequence, binary sequence, which is what all computers use for information, for processing data, for uh, reading text, for doing everything that a computer does. It breaks everything down into zeros and ones and the sequence that they're in. If you send, if you try to play an audio file with a video player on your computer, it won't play. Why? Huh? Can't read it. Oh, I tell you what, I think I need to go lay down today please do yeah or I'll, I'll vice versa that if you wanted your computer if you had a video file on your computer or your phone and you had a, a uh, an audio file player but it doesn't play video if you try to get the audio file player to play the video will it play it Simple answer is no. They're not compatible with each other, okay? So anyway, that's basically, what, once the computer takes the light information, converts it to zeros and ones, then it has to re-encode it again, convert it back to zeros and ones so you can see on the digital screen what it is that you're, that you're filming. The reason why your iPhone and your Samsung or whatever camera you have, it goes in the lens, is converted into a digital image. It then either saves that image, uploads that image or whatever, but then 
it has to be able to play it back. And once it plays it back, you can see what it is that you recorded. You can show all your friends, look what I got, look what I recorded or whatever, okay? So anyway, the body is absolutely amazingly made is what I'm trying to get at. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. And while science may have some excuse for maybe how we got here or maybe how one part of us works to take everything that our body does. And if you just spend an hour one day just thinking, just thinking about everything your body would currently be doing at that particular time, you just you would amaze yourself because how could it do all of that if we were here by accident? I put out a little video the other day uh, and I was absolutely stunned. This guy was showing a video of these little baby sea turtles and they were all trying to get to the ocean, okay? Because that's where sea turtles live. They're called sea turtles because they live in the sea. Literally within three minutes of them breaking through the egg that they were birthed in, within about three minutes, they're either in the ocean or they're dead. Now, we have to train children, human children, to do what we want them to do, what they need to do, okay? Human children are pretty vulnerable when it comes to this world. My question was, how is it that the baby sea turtle, once it comes out of the egg, how does it know that it absolutely must climb out of the sand, find the sea, and make its way to where the waves are coming in to put itself in the ocean within three minutes. How does a baby sea turtle know to do that? Do, do what? It is in its DNA. 100% in its DNA. If they try to tell me that that happened by way of evolution, you will never, ever get me to believe that. Never. Because it's not possible. It's not possible that even if you gave it 10, 20, 30 million years to figure it out, you will have lost the sea turtles completely off this earth. They would have all died out trying to figure out what to do with themselves after they're born. Which way do we go? I don't know. So anyway, that's my prologue here. Uh, back to Psalm 139. I'll get to the point here. Um, Psalm 139, 141. Here we go. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Verse 15, my substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Verse 16, thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy book, this is what we're referring to was God's book. In thy book, all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. So once again, um, I'll ask this question. When God created the heaven and the earth, what did he create it from? Huh? He created it from what, Gary? Now, Gary, Gary, you're trying to get me to believe that the earth was made out of absolutely nothing. Everything has to be made out of something. 
Doesn't it? Should be, but it's not. God is the only one who can take absolutely nothing and turn it into everything that is. Everything. That's pretty good God, if you ask me. Amen. Um, so anyway, when, when God created us, we were in continuance being fashioned when as yet there was none of them. Before the members of my body ever showed up, the DNA already had the, um, the blueprints for it, the way it was going to work it out, the way it was going to do it, what, what proteins they were going to add to whatever proteins, and they were going to put them all together. And instead of doing it over uh, millions of years, it was only going to take nine months for God to do that. And God could have done it quicker but the number nine is the number for fruit bearing and I won't get into all that. But just in nine months time, God can take absolutely nothing and turn it into what you and I are right now. Everything, the color of our hair, how tall we are, how short we are, um, the color of our skin, everything about us is written into our DNA by God, so therefore it not only will happen, it must happen exactly that way. Now, let me get into topoisoimerase, and then we will just move on from this and, and um, go into the rest of, uh, of uh, Revelation chapter 10. Topoisomerase, as I've told you before, is the one thing in the body. Remember, the, the, the DNA or a scroll is rolled up. And once it's rolled up and bound up, there it is, okay? If the body needs something or if the church needs something or if you need something, you must open the book. Well, in DNA, the thing that opens that book is topo I summarize. Let me explain that to you. First of all, it is what makes things that are crooked not crooked anymore. So we're talking about the one thing that can take a closed book and open it again. Ecclesiastes 7.13, consider the work of God. For who can make that straight which he hath made crooked. That's a, that's a rhetorical question. Consider the work of God. Consider this work of God. For who is it that can take that, uh, who can make that straight, which he hath made crooked? In other words, once the DNA has done what it's done, it rolls back together and it's twisted in its crooked form because it's not needed anymore. And it just stays there. And who puts it that way? The same thing that unrolled it to begin with. It's topo isomerase, or in this case, it is Jesus Christ. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 16. And I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. And I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I want you to think about this for a minute. You are blind to one thing in this world. And that is the future. None of us can see the future. We're blind to it. We can't tell what's going to happen tomorrow. We can't tell, uh, Lisa fell earlier this week. Pretty hard fall. And uh, she is going to pretend like it doesn't hurt, but it hurts. And uh, she's got to go see an orthopedist about having them do an MRI of it to find out what's going on down there. Because she fell just flat and hard. And... Um, Fortunately, Lindsay was out there too, taking out the dog. And when she saw her laying there, she ran over and helped her up. But for that first, uh, for the rest of that day, she had a hard time with her arm. The next morning, she didn't even get out of bed hardly at all. She hurt all over. After that, uh, it's kind of loosening up a little bit. Thank God for that. But it still may be something. 
Um, I can tell you that uh, a, uh, a tear of a ligament or a tendon can be worse sometimes than a bone break, okay? Because it takes a long time for that, for that to heal. Uh, when I had shoulder surgery, it took me six months to heal. Whereas if it was a bone break, it only takes about six weeks. Uh, but where was I going with that? That was pretty good. Oh, we can't tell the future. Had she known that she was going to fall, she would have avoided whatever, whatever, if she says it was a big clump of dirt and I believe her because we have moles all in our yard, just tearing our yard to pieces. And she thinks she tripped over a, a mole hill. I think she's making a mountain out of that, but anyway. <laughs> Do what? Not if you don't tell her. <laughs> but anyway, she went flat down, all right? It, had she known that that was going to happen, I'm sure she would have avoided that molehill, okay? If we could know the future, everybody would have avoided 9-11. If we could know the future, everybody, nobody, nobody would have been in San Francisco uh, watching the World Series tonight, they had to, who remembers that? They were, they, they were playing the World Series in San Francisco, or was in Oakland, or in San Francisco, San Francisco, and they had that earthquake, right? And just, if people would have known that, they wouldn't have showed up. So the thing is, we are blind, and we know not the way that we need to go, okay? He said, I will lead them in paths that they have not known. Think about that. Since you don't know the future, let God lead you through the future. Say amen to that. Because you don't know it. You don't know which way to turn. You don't know which way to go. It is always best. I, I get so sick and tired of people saying, well, God helps those who help themselves. In fact, I had a guy at... MUFON, Mutual UFO Network, uh, try to tell me that that was in the Bible. And uh, I said, he said, you know, the, you know how the Bible says God helps those who help themselves. And I went, hold on a second. He said, what? I said, that's not in the Bible. Really? And I said, yeah, it's not in the Bible. And I had... Uh, a guy with us that was helping us for that week, they lived not too far from there. And I said, get out the King James Free Bible Search software and try to look that phrase up. I said, it's not in the Bible anywhere. But people are convinced of that, that that's in the Bible. Because it speaks of God, right? It must be in the Bible. But anyway, the thing is, if we knew the way to go, we wouldn't need God to lead us in the way. If we could tell what, what direction to turn in at what time, then we wouldn't need God to do that for us. But so far as I've found, I need God for everything, everything that I do, everything that I don't do, uh, every church service, every study time, Every time out with Sweetie Pie, everything that I do, I need the Lord directing me. And there's always, always decisions that need to be made by you. And the, I can tell you that the best way to approach those decisions is by getting down on your face before God and asking God, God, will you show me the path that I have not known? Amen. And he said, I will make darkness light before them. And I need to get used to that. Crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. Isaiah 45, 2, I will go before thee. Oh, I like this. Now, think, think of DNA now. DNA has to be uncrookedized, if that's a word. It has to be made uncrooked, untwisted, before it can be read. It has to be opened. 
So in Isaiah 45, God says, I will go before them or before thee and make crooked places straight. In other words, I'll walk ahead of you so that you don't have to worry about as you're walking, all of a sudden there's a turn in the way and you run into a tree or you run into a wall or you run into somebody's car that's doing 70 miles an hour. You don't have to worry about that. I will take care of that for you. I'll make the way straight that was crooked. I'll do that for you. I will go before thee and make crooked places straight, and I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. Now, oh, look at this. Deuteronomy 32. This is about the wicked. The wicked, it's an interesting phrase in the Bible because sometimes you're reading, when you're reading about the wicked, you could be reading about evil angels who are crooked or you could be reading about uh, crooked people that everything they do is crooked every their mind is twisted the way they think the way they go about their life it's even crooked to themselves so in Deuteronomy 32, 5, they have corrupted themselves. Think about that for a minute. They have corrupted themselves. Ask yourself a question. Had you kept going in sin the way you were going before God intervened, do you think that you would have made yourself so crooked that it would be next to impossible, if not totally impossible, for God to straighten you out. Uh, it's a, I, know, I know we say God can do anything, but you get the gist of what I'm saying? Had God not stopped you and intervened in your life at a certain time, where would you be today, do you think? Totally living in sin. Huh? Yeah, you turn you over. You would be living in sin with a cellmate. Okay. But God, that, look at this. So they have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are a perverse and a crooked, like DNA, generation. Think about that for a minute. Job 26, 13. By his spirit, he hath garnished the heavens. His hand hath formed the crooked serpent. I had a lady. I got to show you this verse. I'm going to ask you a question. Does God create evil? Who says no? I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to get you into a fight or anything like that. Huh? I'm going to type in the phrase, I create. Ah. Well. How do I keep this? Eight. There it is. Turn to Isaiah 45. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Isaiah 45. Because I had a lady call me, it's been several years, and chewed me out with a loud voice. Because I said, well, sure God creates evil. Isaiah 45, verse 5, I am the Lord and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, 
though thou hast not known me, that thou may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord and there is none else. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. Does God create evil? Apparently so. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, Correct. So therefore, because he created it in his image, are we going to identify his evil self? He didn't say he created us evil. He created us with God. He said, I create evil. Follow me on this one. Okay? The only way to get Adam and Eve to have a true choice. Okay. If McDonald's only sold one hamburger, one milkshake, and one bag of fries, when you go to McDonald's, would you be sitting there going, uh, give me, uh, what do you kids want? Um, I want, uh, would you hurry up? You don't have a choice, do you? If. Jeez, how did I, anyway. But if McDonald's puts up hamburger over here, Big Mac over here, now you've got a choice, don't you? So when God created Lucifer, did he create him knowing what he would do? Absolutely. Therefore, God created evil by creating the one whom he knew would commit evil and thus give man a true choice. Without the devil, we don't have a real choice. God just, without the tree of knowledge of good and evil, man doesn't have a choice either. God says, eat of the tree of life, period, the end. There's nothing else to it. He can't say, don't eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, because there isn't one. He hasn't made it. But once he made the tree of knowledge of good and evil, he therefore created evil, because Adam and Eve sinned, and now there is evil in this world, and God made that tree. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, so that's what I, and I had a, this lady, she climbed all over me on that one. And she said, well, I want to go tell people in my prayer group that you're teaching false doctrine because they're the one who told me to listen to you. And I, I said, ma'am, I read her the verse. God said, I create evil. And she said, well, I don't care what that says. God doesn't create evil. Okay, I don't care what the Bible says. Um, study that out. Study that out and pray about it. If, you, if you're tripping over it or if you haven't quite accepted it yet, let, let God show you what it means, all right? You may come up with something different. That's fine, okay? It's one of those things that we'll, we'll see. We won't see through the glass darkly anymore. We'll know it, okay? Father, bless your word. We thank you for it. Pray, dear God, Lord, that you'd open our eyes. Help us, dear God, to stay away from the evil. Stay away from the things, Lord, that are evil. Staying away from the evil people and the evil one. And Lord, just help us, God, just put it out of our lives, out of our hearts, to where it's not there anymore. God, make a change in us, we pray in Jesus' name. All of God's people said... Amen.